Hey, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be part one of how I made my mummy. This is going over how I made the prosthetics from scratch. So it's going to go over how I sculpted them, how I made the molds and how I run the silicon inside the molds. They're relatively simple molds. They are snap molds and flat molds, but it does require a little bit of time and some material costs as well. We're going to start off how a few of my tutorials start off, which is looking at a cast of my face. This isn't going to be applied to my own face just because it is a lot easier applying it to somebody else, especially when there's limited vision. This is a plaster face cast, but it has been painted to match the color of the Chavon clay so you get an overall idea of how it all works together. And I'm also painting two layers of dental separator down first so that I can float off my sculpt when it's ready to go onto the molds. While that's drying, I'm going to start on my flat molds. These are little rotted pieces that I will place around the head, neck, arms, hands, wherever I feel like it looks a bit too bare. So I start by smoothing out some Chavant medium clay onto a bathroom tile. Now I'm adding some skin texture through a piece of plastic so it can soften the effects of the sculpting tools. I'm using a sculpting tool specifically designed for creating pores. I'm also using a rather stiff plastic cleaning brush and a rather soft stipple sponge. Now I'm going to carve out some general areas of rot. I'm trying to keep it not looking too same same, so making some areas deeper than others and making some areas more shallow. And now I'm going to go over it with some shellite or naphtha if you're in the UK or the US. Um, it's basically a lighter fluid and it's quite fumy so you do want to wear a mask while using this. And what it does is it melts down the clay so I can soften out some of that sculpt detail and make it look a little bit gooier and smoother on the inside. I go back and forth between the skin texture and the inside of the rot. So the rot I kind of add some detail then I soften it again then I add more detail and then I keep going over the outside skin area to make sure none of that's softened to keep adding back that pore texture into that as well. I sculpt two more smaller versions of that rot, kind of changing up the texture a little bit between them. And now I'm coming back to the face cast. I'm going to work on the eyes first. I was looking at mummy reference images and there were some interesting images of the eyes where it looks like the eyelids are still there, but they're just kind of like, they've got this weird texture to them. So I really wanted to play with that because then you don't need to use contact lenses or have missing eyes if you have most of the eyes covered. So I start by mushing in some clay and smoothing down the edges so the edges are quite thin and then locating where the brow bone and the orbital bone is so that that can be the uppermost ledge and then everything else can kind of sink below it. I make the eyelid area a little bit puffier towards the center and then I'm going to go in with some more plastic and some more pore sculpting tools so um, the similar stuff that I was doing before to make that skin texture and then going in again with that shellite or naphtha to start smoothing out the clay as well if I've put too many tool marks in it to try and bring it all together. Now that I've got the shape roughed out it's not too detailed yet but I'm going to start on the second eye to try and make them look the same. And once they're relatively similar, I'm also going to go down to the mouth and start roughing out that shape as well. I had these plastic teeth that I was going to use underneath, but they ended up being too big and stuck out a bit too far. So I end up using um, a silicon gum with some plastic teeth from a mold that I made for the Lauren Curtis zombie. Uh, and just changing the gum color so that it looks more like a mummy rather than a zombie. So the lips are left blank because that will sit there and then the mouth around it, um, I'm using a reference image again from a mummy where a lot of that tissue is kind of um, rotted away at the center. So again, I'm thinning out the edges and then building up the, the thickest parts towards the center. And I don't smooth this out too much because I'm kind of liking the layering that's happened organically. I'm just adding a little bit more pore texture into it and then I'm going to go back up to the nose. And I'm going to add just a little tiny nose bridge to make the nose tissue look a bit sunken after death as well, just where that cartilage sits. Now to make the eyes look more sunken, make the mouth look more sunken, I'm going to build up the cheekbones so that they look like they protrude a bit more and then everything else is more sunken around the bone structure. So I'm just adding clay around the cheeks. It's kind of connecting the eyes to the mouth, but I am going to mold them separately. And I'm realizing after adding that, that the eyes don't look sunken in enough, so I'm going to add more depth around the outside and make it a little bit more of a dramatic slope inwards. I'm going to add a little bit of rotted away texture onto those cheekbones as well, so it's not smooth skin. Now that I'm happy with the general shape of everything, I'm going to go in and add skin texture over all of it. So I'm using a little bit of cling wrap and that cleaning brush again. I'm also using a little bit of sandpaper and pressing that in to get the pore texture from that. 
And I'm also adding a little bit more shellac to the eyelids because the eyelid skin in the reference photo that I was looking at is this really creepy, really smooth looking skin. So I'm going to just smooth out that clay with the shellite as well. Now that the sculpting has finished, we're going to move on to the mold making part of this. I'm going to start with flat molding, which you guys have seen me do quite a lot. It is the easiest mold making method. So I'm going to do a little wall of flashing around my three flat molds and I was being kind of lazy and using water-based clay instead of my normal chauvant. So it ends up being a bit thicker and taller than it should be, which does make it a little bit harder to apply. So not the best flashing, but that's okay. And then I'm also going to build up walls around it using the water-based clay as well. I give everything a little spray with some crystal clear just to seal it all up. And now I'm going to mix up some pinky sil silicon and pour that over everything. I'm also placing my plaster head into this plastic container and I'm going to fill it with water. Then over the course of several hours, that layer of dental separator will break down in the water. And then I can gently get those clay pieces off the plaster head and put them onto the molds. After about 30 minutes or so, the pinky seal silicon has cured and I can remove the clay walls. And then I have these flat molds almost ready to go. I just need to trim the back so it's completely flat and clean out any clay residue from it. For the facial appliances, I'm going to make three molds. I'm going to make a mold for the left eye, a mold for the right eye, and a mold for the mouth. These are just going to be a positive and a negative side that get snapped together and then clamped down. So to start by isolating out my left eye for the mold, I'm going to put some water-based clay walls into the silicon face cast of myself that I have from forever ago, and then pour some plaster into that to get just the left eye out to be the base of my mold. I'm going to do the exact same thing with my right eye, and then once they're both ready, I'm going to start making the corrected positive by getting a flat layer of water-based clay, and then building up a slope to the edges of my face cast so there's no undercuts. I'm going to use some water, a brush and a cloth to smooth it all out. And once everything is neat and smoothed, I'm going to add some keys and then add a clay based wall around the outside. This is what the positive of my mold will look like, but it needs to be made out of a stronger material. So I'm going to make a mold of this out of silicon. So I spray crystal clear over everything to seal it and I mix up some pinky seal silicon. I do a thin layer first to capture all the detail and then a thicker layer afterwards. And then lastly, I put some plaster over the back as a supportive hard shell. Once that has all cured and set, I'm going to remove the water-based walls and then remove the plaster and the clay from the inside of the mold. I'm going to clean out the excess clay with some water and also use scissors to neaten any overhangs of the silicon. And once it is all clean and ready to go, I'm going to fill it with EasyCast polyurethane resin. It's also got quite a bit of filler in it so that it doesn't overheat and warp. Polyurethanes are deceptive because they don't actually emit any odors, so you don't realize that you're breathing in very dangerous fumes. So you should definitely wear a respirator while using polyurethanes and make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area. Once that has cured, I'm going to remove the easy cast positives out of the mold. And I'm also going to sand down the edges because it can get quite sharp. For the mouth, I'm going to reuse an older mold that I made for the Lauren Curtis zombie. It's basically the exact same process as the eyes. In the meantime, the clay has been floated off that plaster face. So I am placing the eye sculpts and the mouth sculpt onto the polyurethane positives and I'm getting rid of any water droplets that are on the clay. Now to get the clay to stick securely to the polyurethane, you can use a spray adhesive if it's being a little bit difficult. I'm using the heat from my hands to gently push it back down and using sculpting tools to feather out the edges so that they can be nice and flat. I'm also going to check that the detail is okay after the floating off process and just do any final detailing of the skin texture. I do the same process for both of the eyes and the mouth. Lastly, I'm going to go around the edges of a cotton tip dipped in some alcohol just to remove any excess clay and make sure it's a very neat edge. Next, I'm going to put the flashing down. It can take quite a while to get a smooth flashing, but it is an important part of the process. I'm going to start by putting a thin amount of flashing up around the edges of the sculpt. And then I've used a pasta roller to get thin sheets of this plastiline clay. And I'm going to lay those sheets down over the rest of the positive mold. Once I've put those pieces of the puzzle down, I'm going to refine my keys and make sure that those areas are clear of clay. And to also gently smooth out the joins of those clay pieces. I'm also going to cut out two larger areas of that flashing as a touchdown point. So it's where the positive and the negative mold will touch and it just adds a little bit more stability. I do the same process to the other eye and the mouth mold. 
And now I'm going to put some clay walls right along the edge of that polyurethane positive and release any exposed areas of the polyurethane with Vaseline so that the two sides don't stick together. And again, I'm going to mix up that same material, the EasyCast polyurethane resin with quite a lot of filler in it. And I'm going to pour that over the top of the clay to make the negative side of the mold. Once that has cured, I'm going to remove the clay walls and you can see there's quite a bit of jaggedy sharp edges on this side as well, which will also need filing down. So very carefully with those sharp corners in mind, I'm going to open up the mold by putting in two screwdrivers and luckily it hasn't bonded and there's no undercuts. Now I'm going to clean out the clay. I try to remove most of the clay with a wooden sculpting tool, but if there's any areas in the detail that don't come out too easily, you can give it a little scrub with a brush and some shellite or naphtha, but just make sure that you're wearing a mask. Once the molds are all cleaned out and filed down, they are ready to be run. So the first step is cleaning out your molds and the second step is releasing them. I do find that the polyurethane can grab onto my cap plastic and tear it. So for the release that I've had the most success with is thin down Vaseline in shellite or naphtha. So I'll add the Vaseline and the naphtha into a container and stir it around and shake it up until it is a liquid. And then I'll brush this over the positive and the negative sides of the mold and buff it in to make sure there's no areas of thick Vaseline that's going to impede the detail and then let that dry. Next, I'm going to airbrush on my cap plastic layers. I find that airbrushing works the best because you're not touching or disturbing the release. So you have a better chance of it releasing well. Whereas if you're brushing it on, the brush can pick up and remove some of the release layers. I usually use the acetone based cap plastics I find they are a bit stronger when it comes to molds like this which are likely to tear and I also like how quickly the acetone flashes off and each layer is dry ready for the next layer much faster than the alcohol based ones. I dilute the baldies about one part baldies to six or eight parts acetone depending on how my airbrush is spraying it out so if it's coming out a bit webby then it means it's still too thick I need it to be nice and thin so that it does come out quite smoothly so it kind of adjusts depending on how dried up my baldies is and how my airbrush is going on the day and I usually spray four layers on each time rotating my mold each time so that I can get it from different angles to make sure that I don't miss any areas. Once my cap plastic is thick enough and dried, I'm going to mix up the silicon that I will be pouring inside it. So I'm using Platzil Gel 10. I've deadened it quite a bit. I think it's between 150 to 180%. I'll have to double check to see if I've written it down anywhere. Um, and then I'm also adding my Neil Gordon Pale Flesh Tone Pigment and a little bit of red and blue flocking. Once it is thoroughly mixed, I'm going to pour it into the negative sides of the molds. I'll give it a little while to try and get out any air bubbles and then I'm going to pop the positive side on top. It will snap back into place thanks to those keys. And then I'm going to grab a clamp and clamp it in the center of the mold and tighten it as much as possible. Once the silicon in my snap molds have cured, I'm going to try to open them with some delicate even pressure so that I don't snap my molds or cause any harm to the prosthetics. So a good way to do this is to get some wooden pegs, break them in half, and then gently hammer the pegs in from every direction until they get deep enough that you can hear the suction break. And then you can get some screwdrivers in and gently pry the top of the mold off. But I find there are usually layers that are stuck to the negative half and layers that are stuck to the positive half. And you have to get in there and break those layers so that it's not ripped apart while you're opening it. It can be a little bit of a slow and delicate situation. I also like to use quite a lot of baby powder while I'm opening it just so that the cap plastic doesn't stick to itself. And once that is all out and powdered and safe and sound, then I'm going to trim the excess flashing so that there's not this large amount of silicon around the edge for no reason. So this is a finished eye mold. It's got a little bit of a tear, but nothing that's going to impede the application too much. So I'm going to use this one. And then this is the mouth mold, which is also perfectly adequate. So these are the ones that we're going to apply. Now I'm going to fill my silicon flat molds. I've used the same release on them as I used on the polyurethane. So that mix of Vaseline and shellite and the cap plastic is the same amount of cap plastic and the silicon mix is also pretty much identical to what I used in the snap molds. So the process, which you're probably familiar with by this stage, is I pour the silicon into my flat molds and then using a flexible metal filling knife, I scrape over the surface very gently to get a nice flat edge. And then to make sure there's no silicon on our cap plastic blending edge, I go around the edges with a cotton tip. 
And then after a half an hour or so, when the silicon has cured, I do another one or two layers of cap plastic on the back. While spraying the cap plastic onto everything, I also turned over a large flat mold and sprayed cap plastic on the back of that so that I could make some cap plastic sheets. The idea was that I've seen this cool webbing happen on my table when I've sprayed molds and there's that overspray of cat plastic around the edge which gets onto the table. It creates this really nice, organic, authentic looking cobweb pattern, um, especially when it gets rubbed away or, or tried to be removed. So I thought I could make some cat plastic sheets and layer that over the top of the prosthetic once it's down to get that same cobwebby pattern. So while I'm doing layers of cat plastic on my molds, I've been doing layers on the back of a mold to get some flat cap plastic sheets to use for the application as well. Once the cap plastic is dried, it also gets powdered on both sides and then gently removed and stored in a bag. The flat molds are similarly removed by putting some powder on the back and then powdering the front while I gently pull it out of the mold and then these are ready to be applied. Thanks so much for watching, hopefully you found it interesting. These techniques are pretty popular in the film industry for how they make prosthetics, so I thought it would be a good thing for me to practice. And you also get really nice textures, movement, edges, and detail with the silicon pieces, so hopefully you'll be able to see why I like to make it this way in the next video of the application. And many thanks to my patrons, without you guys I would not have been able to afford to do this, so thank you so much, and if you'd like to become a patron to help fund these tutorials, it'd be greatly appreciated. I will link that in the description box below as well. Alright, thanks so much for watching, I'll see you guys soon.